Oh good god, folks, Harman Smith is here with us yet again, whining about the shoddy state that the Gen 9 Pokemon games are in because he wants to remind us all of the glory that is the buggered mess that is Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. This pretendo, as he likes to call anyone who doesn't share his extreme fanaticism of Nintendo, is someone even other extreme Nintendo fanboys hate from what I've heard. Anyways, he's still salty over the Gen 9 review scores because Nintendo just can't do anything wrong, man. So let's get into this and get this road on the show. One of the things I've been interested in in the past couple of years is talking about Pokemon games, specifically their reception and how people have been downplaying them for the longest time. This isn't anything new. Like, you know, Pokemon has consistently been one of the biggest selling video game franchises on the planet since its inception. Not one of the biggest selling video game franchises on the planet, Harmon. The biggest selling video game franchise on the planet. And that's why everyone has been crapping on their games lately. But we'll get into that down the line in the video because it ties in nicely with something he says down the line. But for right now, just keep it on the back burner. Anyway, sorry for interrupting him there, I just wanted to give you a bit of something that those in the writing business like to call foreshadowing. But certain groups of people really love to downplay that and pretend they don't exist or they're not relevant or anything like that. And, you know, I... I feel as if over the past couple of years, I kind of lost sight of like calling these people out because I think, you know, with the Switch generation, I kind of bought into the whole like Let's Go thing and the whole like Pokemon Sword and Shield thing. And to a lesser extent, like uh, Scarlet and Violet, where I legitimately thought that there was potential for, you know, maybe these games aren't as good as past games. Maybe like the team is like losing sight of their of the, of the what's important. Maybe they're like going downhill. I, I'm, I was willing to give people the benefit of the doubt for that. And that lasted until I actually played the games and had a really good time with them. Just because you have a good time with a video game doesn't just magically free it from criticism, Harmon. It also doesn't mean that a game is good. Look, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet absolutely do have potential, but they also absolutely need some patches, or they should have been delayed by another six months at least to fix all of the game's bugs and glitches. Furthermore, this game is open world, and as Game Freak has clearly shown us in this video, it has absolutely no experience with open world RPGs. That also ties into why this game is getting the shoddy review scores it is. Game Freak released a buggy product out there, and they did absolutely nothing to try and fix the problem. Aside from releasing a patch that fixed, like, what, one of the good bugs? One the players actually liked, by the way. Anyways, back to you, Harmon. And unfortunately, because of how busy I've been this entire Switch generation, I haven't really talked a lot about how I feel about that. Uh, I mean, it feels like I only really talk about Pokemon when, like, a new game comes out and I kind of come out and, like, do a review and say it's great. I... I really do need, uh, going forward, to talk more about how I don't respect the criticisms of the Pokemon franchise. Oh, here we go. He admits, finally, that he doesn't like it when Nintendo or any of their games get criticized. Reminds me of a GameStop store that I used to go to, but have long since stopped going to that GameStop store. I think... The vast majority of the people who talk shit about Pokemon don't know anything about it and are just, like, talking out of their ass. Trust me when I say this, Harmon, but the people who criticize Pokemon probably don't just know more about Pokemon than you do. They also probably care a lot more as well. So I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Criticism is not a bad thing, Harmon. Criticism is there to help inform people of a product that they feel didn't quite hit the mark, as is Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's case or to inform people of something that someone did wrong, and the like. It's meant to help, not to hurt, and as shameful as I am about this, I wish I had discovered this little secret back when I was in school, because it would have saved me a lot of headache in the grand scheme of things, and now, Harmon, it's time for you to learn it as well. And I think a really good example of that is this assertion among non- among non-fans, among people who don't play Pokemon, who don't know anything about it, that the games are unchanged from when they first released in 1995 the games haven't evolved at all they haven't they haven't changed they haven't they haven't done anything new or different or innovative it's just the same thing over and over and over again now in Harmon's defense yeah pokemon gen 2 had several improvements over gen 1 and there were a few bad things added in gen 2 and with gen 3 they added just a little bit more but after gen 3 every pokemon game started to feel really samey and trust me, I should know this, as I've played every Pokemon Gen 1 through 9 at this point, and that includes a few spin-offs here and there. At this point, we can safely say that Pokemon is 
suffering from Dynasty Warrior Syndrome, or DWS, in which a game reuses almost all of the content they did from the previous game in the same series. Dynasty Warriors has done it, and now Pokemon is doing it too. Also, I like how the ninth game in each game series is the one where that series finally went open world. Is that funny, or just coincidental? I'm not sure which. Anyways, back to you, Harmon. Now, I've heard this argument since, like, uh, Gen 2, and arguably even before that, uh, with, like, the different versions and stuff like that. But, like, Gen 2, you know, I have, like, explicit memories of, like, people in my family, like, insisting that Gen 2 was, like, the exact same thing as Gen 1. Uh, people who didn't actually play the game or really know anything about it. And, like, anyone who actually plays Gen 2 knows about, like, all the changes they made. You know, they introduced the day-night cycle, you know, a whole new region to explore, two new types of Pokemon, a hundred new types of Pokemon in general, you know, balance changes, adjustments to the meta. Like, there are all these things that made Gen 2 remarkably different than the first generation. And of course, like Gen 3 made some wild changes on top of that. No, it didn't. All Gen 3 did was introduce the special attack, special defense split, meaning now certain Pokemon have better special attack, others had better special defense, when before it was just special. They also took out a lot of the stuff from Gen 2. You know, new moves, new areas to explore, diving, you know, secret bases. Like, I, you know, Gen 3 is not my favorite generation by any means, but there are certainly a lot of things that really radically change from Gen 2. Uh, a lot of things that I think I... I prefer. I think I prefer the Pokemon designs in Gen 3 more. I think the region is one of the most unique and beautiful we've ever gotten. I, I think Gen 3 had um, a lot of great aspects to it, right? You know, Gen 4, we got... Okay, while Harmon's autism is catching up with him, let's go everything he just said, shall we? Gen 3 gave us new moves, new areas to explore diving. You mean new moves that were cut out of the Pokemon games as of Gen 8? Well, some of them anyway. New areas to explore in just that one game, which, you know, I understand, but at the same time, those areas are the same as pretty much any other Pokemon game out there. Diving, which never came back in any Pokemon game that wasn't a Gen 3 remake. The region was one of the most unique. Yeah, because about a good 70% of it or so was water. I mean, it was nice surfing along those long water routes. It was unique, but honestly, there was too much water. Good game otherwise, though, but it's still not enough to say that it drastically changed Pokemon's formula. Gen 4, we got, like, a lot of new updates. You know, the best remakes we ever got and with uh, Soul Silver and, Soul Silver and um, Heart Gold. Which are remakes of the Gen 2 game that didn't add anything except for the Pokewalker, which was never used again, and Walking Pokemon. That's it. We got, like, you know, Gen 5, eventually, with all those innovations, right? Like, uh, th these games just constantly grow and evolve and constantly just introduce new concepts. And yet you didn't list a single flipping change that any of those gens after 3 made rather quickly, uh, so quickly, I think, that a lot of people don't realize just how much Game Freak and the Pokemon Company actually do to keep this IP relevant. And, and that's the key word here, relevant, is that, like, oh, we've been told that Pokemon is on the verge of dying since, like, the 90s, since Pokemon Mania, Pokemania ended, right? Like, according to, like, the society, Pokemon died a long time ago, but in reality, it's the most popular media brand in the world. The games constantly sell, like, 15 to 20 million units, uh, you know, the best-selling handheld games ever made, you know, like, you know, a hu hugely popular franchise with a really quick turnaround time. Uh, we've been getting new games, uh, new generations, every every three years with, like, you know, side games and spinoffs, uh, you know, remakes, like, interspersed in between them, right? Like, I have no patience for people who say Pokemon is stale, boring, or uninspired. Then you were some sort of brain-dead moron that could give Quantum TV a run for his money and just how brain-dead you two are. But see, this goes back to what I said at the start of this video. Anytime Nintendo or one of their games gets just the tiniest amount of criticism, this guy gets saltier than Quantum TV and King Klutzy 552 having a salty pissing match in the Dead Sea. Because uh, what they've been doing for the past 30 years has been endlessly entertaining. And playing Scarlet and Violet and seeing how much they've inter innovated with like the open world setting, with like the new mechanics, with like some of the some of the things they've done. Game Freak didn't innovate Jack with Scarlet and Violet, you pissing match starter you. Everything they did in their open world game was done by other companies, notably Bethesda Softworks over 30 years ago. Literally. Anyone else here remember the Elder Scrolls 2 Daggerfall? 
play that game and come back and tell me you think Pokemon Scarlet and Violet innovated open world games. Unless you meant Pokemon games alone. In which case, yeah, I'll side with you on that one, Harmon. But only just a little bit. And like, I find myself like really, really enamored with what they've been doing with with Pokemon Scar with with uh, Gen Nine, right? I I find that the complaints regarding like Pokemon's lack of evolution to be completely ridiculous. It's it's absurd, really, when you compare Pokemon to like other franchises like it. You know, Call of Duty has been going on. You know, uh, you know, the first Call of Duty game came out in, like what, like two thousand three, something like that. Uh, you know, and, and they've been released annually since then. Like, Call of Duty has evolved significantly less than Pokemon has. And that is, like, objectively speaking. Like, Call of Duty has done nothing new, right? Like, that that's, that's what... That's what a true video game franchise that doesn't evolve looks like. Like, that is what... That is what Call of Duty is what happens when you don't innovate or change at all. Like, there is nothing fundamentally different between the new Call of Duties and the like modern warfare. Like there has been no evolution, there has been no change, there have has been no adjustments. Like uh, people only like Call of Duty because it's a generic military action game. Funny you should mention that little bit right there, Harmon, because people only like Pokemon because it's a generic beast capturing role playing game. You see how easily we can turn that around? Also, Call of Duty games tend to try and tell different stories, and Pokemon doesn't even try to change the story. Ever since the first game, the story has always been without fail. Child gets started Pokemon from regional professor. Child gets sent on an errand. Child is told to take the Pokemon League Gym Challenge. Child stops evil team along the way. Child beats the Elite Four. Child becomes champion of the region. Maybe you should just stop trying to pretend that Pokemon isn't a scam anymore, eh, Harmon? That they've been playing since they were little kids, all right? That is the appeal of Call of Duty for these people, as opposed to, like, Pokemon, which is an innovative, unique, fun, fantasy adventure game where you get to be the Beastmaster and, and set Pokemon against each other and, like, uh, capture more and more powerful monsters and uh, improve your skills and prove yourself to be the best there ever was. Pokemon is awesome, you know? Uh, it always has been. I've always enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, even as an adult, like I, I find myself getting like really enraptured with with Scarlet and Violet and what that game is doing. I I find it like baffling that so many people are saying that like uh, these games don't evolve, that these games don't change. It is it is a cope. Uh, th that is the the reality we're dealing with here is that like Pokemon. Pokemon does change. It does evolve. It does like reach the next level, so to speak. And but the people who say otherwise they don't appreciate that. They don't understand what Pokemon has done as a brand, as a, as a series. And like, I think a big part of that, like I, people don't realize this, uh, Pokemon sequels come out a lot more quickly than sequels to other games. All right. And that is precisely because they don't actually innovate anything, Harmon. Seriously. I've seen Pokemon add in a few cool features into each game, only to axe those very same features in the very next game. When you're doing that, who needs to be innovative anymore, right? People don't appreciate this, but you know, while people are waiting like a decade for like The Witcher 4 or whatever, a decade or longer for The Witcher 4 or whatever, like Pokemon fans can expect to get like a high quality new sequel in three years. And that's because most other games actually try to innovate Harmon. And if it isn't innovating, then they are trying to come up with a compelling story, something to drive the player forward. Furthermore, most of these other companies actually try to make their games look like the stuff modern platforms are trying to reach or are capable of playing. And let's not forget the voice acting, which for some odd reason or another, Pokemon games still have yet to do. All of these things, Harmon, take time to implement in a game. Pokemon, for the most part, is just a rehash of the Pokemon game from the year before with a different coat of paint. With, like, a reasonable amount of, like, new content, changes, and new Pokemon, all right? Like, the Pokemon, the Pokemon formula of, like, being rather low budget, of uh, sticking to, like, what works, and, uh, you know, doing, doing what it's doing, it's clearly working for them. And nobody really wants to admit it. Like, um, 
the same people who are attacking Pokemon right now are also praising Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, which is which is laughable to me. It's it's ridiculous to see like how hypocritical a lot of these people are. I I think Pokemon is going to be here for a very, very long time. I don't think it's going anywhere. Pokemon's formula of being low budget and sticking to what works will only last them so long. Most people are waking up to Game Freak's BS, and if Pokemon is going to be here for a very, very long time, it's because of brain-dead buffoons like you and me who buy anything even remotely Pokemon related. Seriously, folks, I promise you, at this point in time, it's safe to say that Pokemon is a scam, or at least the main series games are. But the fact that so many people are refusing to acknowledge that, that Pokemon is a mainstay, high-quality franchise in the video game industry, it's really sad. Uh, I am getting very, very tired of seeing like pointless, empty complaints lobbied at Pokemon simply to downplay the fact that it's such a high-quality IP. Pokemon isn't a high-quality IP, at least not anymore. The games are stale and repetitive, the graphics, and I am no graphics whore, look like they belong on the PS3 at best. Tired old storytelling, the list goes on. I find it very telling how most third-party developers are willing to treat Pokemon with more respect than Nintendo and Game Freak are, and to be 100% honest, at this point, I really wish Nintendo would find someone else to develop the Pokemon games or just sell the IP off to some other company that isn't EA or Microsoft. I know that's never going to happen, as the IP belongs to Game Freak, and they would have to come to some sort of understanding, but still, man! Anyway, with that, we have come to the end of Harmon's video, which means that we have come to the end of my video. Now, I have some grinding to do in Pokemon Scarlet, and then I have several more playthroughs of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet to plan out and play through, so until the next video, ladies and gentlemen, I will see you later. Or on my gameplay channel, wherever you might find me next. Anyways, bye bye for now!